going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Vile Files Bachelor Recap Edition. It's sex week. Boy, pajama week. Boy, boy, is it ever. Uh, Amanda is wearing pajamas. I pitched in the group chat last, yesterday night. I said, y'all, you're going to hate this idea. I think we should wear pajamas every week for Fantasy Suites Week. And I said it's a great idea, but I probably won't do it. And I said, to start a tradition, someone's got to bite the bullet. I'm really proud of you for following through on your idea. You're- I will say, she teased it well. Getting a text that says, y'all are going to hate this idea. You're on. You're ready. And you don't I, know what it's going to be. I walked in this morning. And I thought, what an interesting outfit. It's and then a... I realized that they were pajamas, and I, for, <laughs> I forgot about. People need pajama sets in their life. Do you have any pajama sets, Andrew? What do you wear for bed? Um, no, I'm just a boxers, no shirt guy. Yeah, yeah. boxers, no shirt. Yeah. yeah, I hear that. I also think pajama sets has little. Pos- do you wear pajamas pizzazz. to bed? Most nights. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of become a thing. Yeah. Susie, Susie? you a pajama person? Um, no, I'm actually not. I feel like I'm a a big t-shirt kind of person mm. okay big baggy tee mm-hmm. yeah all but right i well, do have a lot of cute pajamas okay yeah well, wonderful well, yeah. Well. they sit in a, a shelf somewhere <laughs> great well we have a full lineup today andrew spencer Susie evans and the household is with us today lots to get into we uh we thought it uh, would be apropos to have Susie join us <laughs> we all we you know we we need a a, a woman on the we, we have Allie and amanda but a, a woman <laughs> girls <laughs> we, we a woman with fantasy suite experience or Allie men. or you know, fantasy suite of. week experience at least <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we, we all know uh, you were a big part of, obviously, last year's kind of crazy finale. So, you know, and maybe you won't. Maybe you don't have any insight to share, Susie, but we figured <laughs> we'd bring you on and see if you do. I feel like you might. I feel like you might. Andrew, we'll find you're, out. you're also with us. Yeah. If yeah. you didn't know that. No already. fantasy suite. Uh, How are you? Here. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. Yeah. You're good? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. You're feeling good? Yeah, well, you know, I'm trying. Just got back from Vegas, so I'm, you know, mm. slowly recovering. What was the high and low of Vegas for you? Uh, I think it was all highs. There wasn't really any lows except for the lack of sleep. Okay. How long um, were you there? And dehydration. Uh, two days. That's probably That's the, perfect the perfect amount, amount of time. Exactly. So I, I would have one got, night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bella Hadid was there, which was uh, really cool. Just like uh-huh, in Vegas or with sure. you or Well, we were like at the same event and she like came up to Abigail, which was the craziest. She's like, I love you. And we're just like looking. And we're like, Oh, yep, that's Bella. <laughs> and then Andrew and Bella had their own fantasy what, what was the event? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Throw my hat in there. What was the event for? Uh it was for a restaurant opening. Um, for one of the like our our, our close friends like knows him and uh they invited us, so it was really cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, lots to get into, Allie. Let's get started with the uh some bachelor tea. Whatever tea. Is there, any, is there any bachelor tea out tea. there? Well, Gabby Windy might be dating Alan from Dancing with the Stars. They okay. just wrapped up their tour. Mm. Um, and, you know, the people had thought they were maybe flirty and like some behind the scenes footage. But they were spotted out at Avra, which is like a what is it, Mediterranean place in Beverly Hills. No and idea. they like went on a date night and people were commenting that like they were just like beaming at each other and like. A they source, went to dinner just the two of them? Yes. And a source, that sounds like a date. A source told people they're both single. He wants to find love and so does she. He asked her out. This is their first mm. date. They haven't been out at all. He was so excited to take Gabby out. They grew really close while Gabby was on Dancing with the Stars and remained close. The hope for both of them is that something blossoms from this. Who is the source, Alan or Gabby? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, how do you know that's the it's first Amy, date? It's Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. It's Tyra Banks. <laughs> Oh, no, it's not. That's not Tyra Banks. Yeah, she's leaving. She's leaving. Oh, my. Yeah, yeah. she's gone. The restaurant they went to is $4 signs on Google. How do we feel about that? Oh, yeah. She's... Like, four out of four. What does that mean? Yeah. It means it's, like, the most expensive as oh, Google can use that wow. Dancing with the Stars money. Yeah. 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 For, for a first date, like, would you enjoy going somewhere very, very fancy for a first Fugy. date? No. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes and no. It depends. I think in this context, it makes sense. Yeah. Clearly, they've been touring the country together. There's probably a lot of rapport. Yeah. A first date that you met on a dating app, though? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. a little heavy. Unless he's like a millionaire. Mm-hmm. Just wanting to ball out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even still, it's just a little, it's a little much. I just, yeah, I feel like it's like you throw money at situations. Yeah. It's hard to not have that takeaway, even though maybe it's just like they wanted a lovely seafood dinner in Beverly Hills. <laughs> anyway, well. Do we do we ship them? I think sure, they're cute. I think they're very cute. Eric's got a girl now. Maybe yeah. Everyone's maybe moving does, on. Does Gabby feel the pressure now that 
Eric is no. in love? You know that for so. sure. Yeah, we're very <laughs> no. close. I um, was just talking to her before this. I actually yeah. am the source that went to people. <laughs> I was sitting there as well. Um, but no, I feel like she's been very, I feel like she's been focused on Dancing with the Stars. Okay. Moving on. Those are the vibes I get from a distance. Gotcha. But Ivan Hall got engaged. Yeah, I saw that. A lot of people yeah. are moving on, yeah. doing big things. Susie was the videographer. For the engagement. Oh, oh, how that, oh, so how, how, tell us more, Susie. I met Ivan last year and then he reached out um, pretty re- like pretty recently and asked if I'd be down to do it. I was like, oh my gosh, hell yeah. So I flew out there and I just like kept it a secret on social media. Um, and then, yeah, he got her a freaking Tesla, a ring and a Tesla. I was like, what side of Bumble Jeez. do I need to be on? Wow. <laughs> like, yeah. They're, and yeah, then he took her to opera to right. celebrate. Yeah. Should I bar high through us guys, man? Should I, uh, <laughs> I know he's breaking the union line. Are we buying cars now for engagement? That's what <laughs> the I'm ring saying, ain't bro. Out. What the ring ain't enough? <laughs> Isn't there like a back order for Teslas? <laughs> you get a brand new car. <laughs> Did he give her the car Literally. or the engagement ring first? Was it like, will you marry me? Oh, by the way. Here's a car, or <laughs> like, was the ring in like, in the car? He waited for the yes to make sure it was true love, and then he brought out the car. Because, okay. right. because if like, not, okay, if she, she said yes. no, then he was like, "Oh, at least I like, have a new car." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Smart. send okay. it back. <laughs> well, all right. I do feel like whenever there's those car commercials around the holidays, where it's always like, "Surprise, I got you a car." Everyone's like, "Wait, yeah. but that's a huge financial decision. You should consult your partner." So in yeah. a way. It does almost make sense to do it before you're a merged entity. I guess. Yeah. While you're still individual. You two separate bank accounts. It's well, good it's... for Tesla, honestly. That's a great. Yeah. Great d- maybe he got like a deal. Yeah. I'm assuming. Oh. Uh, why would he get a deal? I don't know. Tesla's like ads. This is like Susie Evans is videographing <laughs> this. <laughs> I don't know what the word Yeah. I actually hooked it up. Yeah. They contacted me. <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't, I don't feel like Tesla's out there giving out deals, but oh, no. if you. If you got a deal, Ivan, hook it up. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> Let me know. Give us the discount code. Hashtag sponsored. Yeah. Yeah. Ivan20 at checkout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, congrats. congrats yeah. to Ivan. And what's his fiance's name? Taylor. 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 Ivan and Taylor. Congrats. congrats. Congrats to Ivan and Taylor. Love it. Well, I almost uh, said Susie. Speak- <laughs> congrats to Sorry, Ivan, congrats Susie, and their Ivan's, Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Uh, speaking what a, what a collab. Of, of dating, um, Michelle Young was recently talking about Raya and how hard it is to get on Raya because now she's out here in LA. Susie, maybe I don't know if you're on Raya or if you try to get on Raya, but Michelle was saying that whoever created Raya extremely like dislikes Bachelor Nation and it's impossible to get on. I found it interesting. She was like, you know, the the Hannah B's of the world. It's impossible to get on. And I was like, or is it impossible for you to get on? Like, it just felt like she had this whole personal experience and then was like, you know, Hannah B. Uh, well, yeah, maybe Han- maybe before she was in a relationship, Hannah B tried to get on. Totally. And, yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Yeah. Told people she couldn't get on. Yeah. Are you on Raya? Did you try I'm, to get on? I'm on Raya. You oh! are. <laughs> Guys, relax. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but Who needs a Tesla? He's on Raya. Susie, are you on, uh, on Raya? Yeah, I'm on Raya. Oh! <laughs> I am. Susie. Nick, at any point in time, the dramatic were you pause. on Raya? I, I was on Raya, Goodness. but it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it was a little different in my day. Yeah, in my day. When I, I first moved to LA, Raya had just gotten started. Yeah. And they were like just trying to get people on. So they first asked me to go on, and I was like, "No, like it, I w- This was shortly after Caitlyn's season, and I was like, "I don't, I don't, I'm not ready for this." And then a few months later, when I was just like kind of bored and didn't really have a lot of friends in LA, I was like, "Yeah, fuck it." I went on and 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 was on for a while. And then when they made me The Bachelor, I had to like frantically get off. And then, frantically. Well, I was like, He's like running from a tornado well, of know, women. It all happened very <laughs> quickly when they asked me to be the basher to being announced, and I was like, "Oh shit, guys, I'm on Raya!" Like, and I, you know, and so I should probably. And it's not like getting off of Raya is like trying to cancel a gym membership. Uh, it's not easy. <laughs> and then after Vanessa and I broke up, I, w- I I went back on for like a year. And then Do you have off. to pay no matter what on Raya? Yeah. 
Uh, I, so, I, right? I didn't, but again, I think I was, I was an early ad- adopter <laughs> nowadays, but then I think now it's been out for a while. They yeah. have more people. They can get more picky. I think when it comes to bachelor alums, you know, you get 60 new people every season and I think they're trying to keep it. It's, it's an exclusive app. Like <laughs> Rye is not for love. It's for clout, you <laughs> know? <laughs> so like, it's like. You know, you Speak might. Speak for yourself, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find love over here. Yeah. <laughs> well, let Don't me crush our f- dreams. Let over me know here, if you find you love. Know? And I've never heard of a Raya success story. Uh, I actually love, had a pretty like good marriage. I don't know. Well, tell no. us, tell <laughs> us your story. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm no, 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 no. I'm I, sure. I'm not like, a great yeah, girl, like... Raya. So I mean, I, I think it's possible. Andrew doesn't want to get kicked off. He's like, <laughs> don't say anything bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's he's like no, he's like it's all about the connection. I support Raya. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Susie endorse this message. Yeah, use their uh, promo code. Yeah. Do you guys Andrew have any? Susie. Do you have any tips for any other Bachelor Nation yeah. alums who are trying to get on Raya as a as a you know the Bachelor didn't work now. Now they're turning to riot. I would say, don't say you're on The Bachelor. Uh, I think if you just kind of sign up and just not like use your regular profession and not. You got to... on because of your football thing, right? Yeah. Didn't I read that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah, how yeah, I yeah. got on, yeah. So it's not like, it depends on what you put in to the criteria. Susie, did Maybe you don't put have Bachelor, you know, all your seasons on your Instagram bio. Yeah, that too, probably. Yeah, I don't I, have my season yeah, or I mean, anything either. like that. Yeah. Yeah, Raya tips one on one. There we yeah, go. Yeah, then it's like if you know, it's like you watch Bachelor too, ha. Huh? You know, <laughs> it's like you can't get out of me. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have season whatever with a rose in your bio. Mm-hmm. What if yeah. I just? I'm gonna start doing that. Just it's a random, <laughs> like really old just season. Like, just like tag like, really random would shows. Not have been to. I was on the circle. That'd be great if you do. And people call you out. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, final final little tidbit because I feel like we're talking a lot about Bachelor relationship stuff. Tyler Cameron recently spoke out about his time dating Gigi Hadid and uh-huh. like the pressure that was. And he was saying that at that time he had $200 in his bank account and he's like trying to date Gigi Hadid over here. Oh no, I, I know what he's talking about. Oh it's, yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a real thing. Like right off the show, like you're just like, I mean, you get in this world and you're like, oh wow, this girl is this, 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 and this. And I'm like, well, I'm not like balling like these guys are. So I, I know exactly what he's talking about, but I, and I love that how he explained it and he's open to to be talking about that, I know one people, a lot of people want to say something bad about it, but it's the truth. A lot mm-hmm. of guys don't have a lot of like date money to to go on dates, but they go anyway. So that's it's actually you know a true testament to the girl that he's doing that for. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever have a whether it was right after the Bachelor or any other time in your life where you had like no money to your name, but you're out there like? Oh, yeah. When I was living out in Europe, man. Going on dates out there, and I, and I found a way through the system. It's go on walks, man. Oh. Go on walks, and you just find these little food vendors and stuff. Like that's Have that's kind of half baked. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's just exactly. That. <laughs> it's it's just like every guy has their half baked date. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 The half baked date. Yes, sure. I don't need to eat. I'm not hungry. I ate <laughs> <laughs> yesterday you're not hungry are you I haven't hey, eaten yesterday. for 24 yeah. hours <laughs> I'm on a cut <laughs> uh, Susie have you ever been on a date where you got the impression that uh, cash was a little tight for your date um I don't think any like first dates or anything like that I've been in relationships where there's like the money's been tight would you split the check or are you like waiting for him to oh. <laughs> pick it up oh no I always I, I'm I'm like Always reaching for the pocketbook, you know. We love and that. But is I'm that hoping a, that they're gonna stop that. me. Yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, it's the reach. It's like it's how the far insincere. I am. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the insincere grab. We all, we all love an insincere Crocodile grab. Crocodile arm, you know. All in his, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but I insist. I'll be like, no, please, 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 let me, let me at least split. Yeah. And like, I will, I will pursue it because I'm like, I want them to know, and I really would split it, but like, I probably would judge them a little on a first date if they're like, yeah, go ahead. I'd be like, okay, see <laughs> yeah. you never. Love that. <laughs> I would judge them a little, as you should. Uh, what else we got? That's wrapping up our, That's our it. tea. That's it. Got a media well, Charity, Charity said that the feeling of being the next Bachelorette is indescribable. Indescribable. Well, yep. isn't that a descriptor? Aww. Well, 
How, are you excited about charity as the bachelorette, Andrew? You know, I'm excited about anyone who gets the opportunity to do that. I think everyone's pretty much, you know, um, worthy of that position. It's not like, oh, this person or that person. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that could have been mm -hmm. the bachelorette from this cast. Yeah. Like uh, who? Uh, I thought uh, Ariel was good as well. She was super funny. Um, and then I, oh, I don't think, am I, allowed, am I allowed to say that yet? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's gone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 I don't want to like spoil something. <laughs> Um, R.I.P. <laughs> I thought she was great. Um, I thought Jess was great as well. Um, Jess, I did. I don't know why. I thought she was like very intentional with what she, you know, what she was being there for. So she's pro sparked your interest of the glitter, the body glitter. You like the glitter? I think it's a pro. I guess right. Yeah. Susie I mean, is pro, pro Susie glitter. Is pro glitter. I don't. I don't know really too much That's, about it. Really. I love it. Andrew, could we see you back on the shores of paradise? Is um, that in the cards for you still? I mean, I wouldn't mind, but it's it's, it's the contract at this point. It's like, I kind of want to like, just kind of be able to do my thing in life. Um, but like, you know, you can't sometimes. And so it's not like a out of the question thing. And it, Jess would be on your radar. It sounds like maybe. No, 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 no. no that's not what I'm saying. Why is Nick like match me? He's like, and then. <laughs> no, no, that's not, what I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that there's a lot of girls. Actually, I, all top 10 could have been. Uh, easily, easily the Bachelorette. I don't know if I agree with that, but really, all I, top ten. I swear, like the whole um, the reunion show. I thought that was fun. They were all they all had personalities. I didn't see that in like the show, but I was like, wow, they're very like okay. outgoing. It was good to see. All yeah, right. it was good. It was a good cast. All right, mm -hmm. Susie, your thoughts, Charity Bachelorette. We love. Yeah, I love. I feel like she's gonna be great. I think she's beautiful. She's very smart. Um. I think from what I've heard, she's a really good person. So I think that's refreshing and nice to hear that it's just like gone to somebody that's genuinely kind and, and I'm excited to see it. Um, but I also think there were so many great choices in the cast. Like there were so many cuties. I also love Jess. I think she would be a great bachelorette. I Thank think, you. I mean, who knows? She's pretty young, <laughs> so it could happen down the road. Yeah. With team Jess over here. Oh, yeah. All right. Also, I Susie really like would have been a great bachelorette as well. I agree. I Susie would, would have been awesome. I would have laid yeah. down my life for Susie still, to be the bachelorette. I, I still would love Susie the bachelorette. Yeah, yeah I feel like it We're is not a it. dead possibility. <laughs> Spring is upon us. You're going to be getting outside. You're going to be walking around. Maybe you're hiking. Maybe you're going to uh, some events. Either way, you're going to have to have comfortable footwear. And Rothy's has all the answers from you to slip-ons, to dress shoes. Rothy's has it all. And they're making such amazing quality products with recyclable plastic people. I mean, my Rothy's is a modern marvel. There are these wonderful red kind of loafer shoes that I can pair with a suit, I can pair with jeans, slacks. They're so versatile, they're so comfortable, and they look brand spanking new because anytime they get a smudge of dirt on them, I just throw them in the washing machine and they come out sparkling. There's no break-in period, no blisters of any kind from my feet. Not with Rothy's. Rothy's original slip-on sneaker won best slip-on sneaker from Self Magazine's 2022 Sneaker Award. Rothy's has so many options, from their iconic lightweight tote to fan favorite shoes like the flat, the point, and the all-new almond loafer, finding an ir irresistible range of hues designs to make you smile. You have got to check out Rothy's amazing lineup of all their products, and right now, you can get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash V-I-A-L-L. For stylish and comfortable shoes, shop Rothy's. And like I said, get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. Drizzly is the most convenient way to buy beer, wine, and spirits with delivery to your doorstep in under 60 minutes. It's the number one app for alcohol delivery. We love Drizzly in this household because it always keeps the party going. Wherever you are, wherever you're at, wherever you're having fun, if you run out of spirits, beer, or wine, you do not have to pause, stop, or delay the party at all because Drizzly, while you're having fun, while you're entertaining, while you're enjoying the moment, Drizzly can be delivering your favorite beverages right to your doorstep in under 60 minutes. And the prices are really good. So, okay, I was literally, my boyfriend and I were at a wine bar this weekend 
And then I started thinking about this other wine that I really like that they did not have, but I was reminded of. And I was like, we got to drizzle a bottle of wine home. So that way, like we can like finish up, have our charcuterie, et cetera. But it was great because I could look and be like, this is where it is the cheapest. Like the it lets you kind of not only make sure you're getting that one specific kind that's your favorite, but you can also see like what it's priced at different stores and go for one that's like yeah. the most affordable. It's been super raining in L.A. Not to complain about the weather being an L.A. resident, but honestly, like it sucks. It mm-hmm. sucks lately. And Natalie and I were just like chilling at home. We were out of our favorite bottle of wine and we just drizzled it right to our doorstep because neither of us wanted to go out in the rain. It was truly under six. I think it got it like in 30 minutes. Boom. Amazing. Super fast. Uh, And you can get the convenience of Drizzly as well. It's super easy. Just download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com. Again, Drizzly is the most convenient way to buy beer, wine, and spirits with delivery to your doorstep in under 60 minutes. Drizzly is the number one app for alcohol delivery. Just download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. All right. Well, that's it for, I guess, for the tea. Be- uh, before we get into the episode, a couple housekeeping notes. Speaking of Ariel, we will have Ariel on the show next week after AFR. Nice. Get her thoughts and all on Sex Week and the finale. Uh, so we're excited to have Ariel. Just a couple programming notes, too. So we're going to actually be dropping the episode with Ariel. It'll release sometime on Tuesday right after the finale. And then the recap for the finale will be in lieu of going deeper on Thursday. So basically we're moving going deeper on to Tuesday with Ariel and then the recap will be on Thursday. Just what we want you to get that a- Ariel episode out right away and then we'll drop that recap next Thursday for y'all. So just uh just some quick programming shifts. Also we have Rachel Bilson this week on Going Deeper this Thursday. Be sure to check that out. That'll be a ton of fun. Rachel and I will get to catch up. We haven't uh, talked in a while and uh, see what she's up to. Apparently, she's had an orgasm for the first time from sex. Speaking of sex week, so she's uh, been talking about that. I don't know. I don't know if we'll get into that or something else, but I do know she's recently been in the news for that. Don't forget another episode of Better Date Than Never this Thursday live at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. If you can't join us live, don't worry. All the episodes of Better Date Than Never plus bonus up. Updates. Uh, when are we going to start Vanderpump? Soon. We're going to start Van- soon. soon. It's on very, the docket. Very soon. We also have uh, our pop culture roundup. Plus, we have rom com recaps. All my uh, interviews with the ladies from my season on The Bachelor. All behind Vile Files Plus. You get a seven day free trial, so check it out. Uh, just go to vilefiles.com to subscribe. Literally, everyone who signed up says it's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's like I've never seen that these, these types of like ratings and scores it's it's truly incredible what the people are saying the people like it yeah like a hundred percent you heard it here first folks. Uh, like we're a tomato fresh or whatever they call it <laughs> a tomato fresh <laughs> tomato fresh score yeah, yeah. certified anyway, fresh. we're certified fresh if uh, <laughs> if, uh so check out Vile files plus if you haven't already and it, amp this thursday our topic is sex injuries so sex injuries if you've been injured well fucking uh, <laughs> if you're six weeks i one time got <laughs> shoved into a IR. brick wall Susie, I, I feel like you have a story oh my god no i just had like flashbacks to like i feel like ever no nah, i don't want to go there no <laughs> <laughs> i see my face we it's said like, sex injuries and, i feel like everybody and i'm saw, like I saw PTSD. It was like I'm like a trauma response from Susie. Everyone's had that experience when you're like, I don't know. We all know. I'm not go. I'm not on that show this week. (laughs) (laughs) All right, all right. Well, uh, anything we're missing before we get into sex week? Let's get into sex week. Love song March Madness on the Vile Files Instagram. Uh, There you go. Some polls up. Uh, All right. Well, the episode starts uh, there in Thailand. Thailand? Yeah. yeah. Karabi. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Zach, uh, they really need to put the bachelors in like, I think they need to to update the wardrobe. It's (laughs) it's too golf dad. Good Lord. Yeah, I agree. But you you kind of get a say, don't you? You get to pick what you, maybe that's his style. Maybe. Yeah. But that suit was a pushover. The suit? I thought like we were talking the, about the the suit the he wore up? at the end. The no, I was yeah. talking about the beginning. His yeah. like hero shot where he's yeah, on like the boat in. and he's just like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> standing there and he's just got like khaki dad soccer shorts and on a and like a floral shirt. Yeah, yeah. and a floral shirt. It just. I'd take that over another shower scene, though. I was Those gonna say, we have, also is he naked? What do you mean? He's when got when like he's showering and he's rubbing his chest profusely. Is he naked? I, when I was filming like my my uh, bachelor bachelor intro package, we were in Chicago, 
and they did a shower scene and like i think i yeah like sometimes you have shorts on but this particular time i was like i think i was i was naked and the camera guy was like really into his craft and <laughs> like this the camera was just like up underneath my legs and like zooming in i just and it was like a long fucking day of this us doing all these shots and i was getting so pissed and i call up producers i'm like why are you guys filming my balls <laughs> my like, dick and balls like i don't understand this is on fucking abc like why am i shooting a fucking porno like <laughs> it was just so <laughs> and then they told me how they had like all this archive footage of like all these random <laughs> and I was just like this doesn't make me feel better that's like, maybe for I'm control blackmail you yeah. <laughs> exactly I don't it's know like, quiet we have your balls so uh, some, <laughs> sometimes they are sometimes they aren't I don't know I was I remember feeling very uncomfortable anyway so Zach uh, this this episode this is all Sean Lowe's fault Sean fucked over Zach I feel real like people. Andrew would say this might be my fault too I, I did say that to you last night. Really? I was yeah. like, I don't know. Uh, you think yeah, this? He texted me well, next. I think it, it's it's very calculated. It was more like trying to be the perfect bachelor, yeah. and he like saw what Clayton did and what happened in Clayton's season. He tried to like right those wrongs, mm. and I'm like, man, if you just go into your own season and do it your way, like I feel like he tried to appease to the crowd and not, you know, mm -hmm. his true self. You know, no one told him to not do sex week. No one told you to do that. Yeah, it's really interesting because, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, I remember going into Sex Week and I, I told the producers, um, see, that's where he made the mistake. Zach, Zach said, I'm not having sex with anyone. Yeah. It's like, well, <laughs> I was like, I'm only going to have, I'm like, I'm not having sex with all of them. I'm not hooking up with Rachel and Raven. Yeah. I, I told them that. And I was just like, so we have to figure out. And, and the fact that I didn't say anyone, they couldn't, like, they couldn't film that, you know, because they couldn't give that away, you know. But the fact that he told the producers clearly that he wasn't going to have sex with anyone, and then they made him film this whole sit down with Jesse, and you could just tell, you just, you could just know that they were just like hoping he would fuck up and even and Jesse not have sex. Like, oysters for dinner. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're like he, Jesse being like, "That's going to be really tough. Are you sure you're you sure going to you be able to do this?" Uh, yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I heard, I don't know this is, if this is true, but when Jesse was a bachelor back in the day, I've heard it was like very different. Like yeah. I heard there was lots of sex going on like throughout the season, like back in the day. Huh. I don't know if any of that's true, but I, I you know, and not just Jess, specifically Jesse, but I just, I've heard it was a very different time. Mm. Yeah. I just feel like it's super weird to put like a time on, on like sex in a way. I feel like it's just like a moment thing. And if you're feeling it, go for it. And if you're not feeling it, it's fine. It's like, like when people say like, I'm gonna wait till the third date to have sex. Like who, who plans that? I don't want to plan when I have sex, you know what I mean? In a way. So I just like feel it was a little weird that he was just like, Oh, we're not going to do this. I'll wait until after we'll plan that. Like, come on, man. Like if you're in the mood and you're feeling it, you can't stop that. Like if I'm on Clearly a he couldn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So like, you should have just let the, the vibes what it was going to be. Susie, did you, uh, did Clayton have any conversations with you or anyone else that you were aware of about sex prior to that week? Not with me and not with anybody as far as I'm aware of, but, um, but obviously you never know. They could have, I, I know that week during fantasy suite week, I think Gabby said like, I want you to explore these relationships fully. They didn't say sex, but I feel like she was intending that she felt saying she felt comfortable with him exploring these relationships however he felt he needed to um which is good because she was able to just communicate exactly how she felt it was after he had already had his fantasy suite date with rachel but i thought that was cool because she was like hey here's how i feel about it and i want you to know and i want you to be be sure by the end of this that you're making the right decision for you remind the audience because honestly i i don't totally remember what was your fantasy suite date weekend like didn't you you didn't end up going to the fantasy mm -mm. suite because they left dinner you let yeah and because at the time you had a lot of reservations about the possibility of him having slept with anyone else like what were you feeling yeah. going into that week you were last i think and did you know you were last um only after the second date was announced and it wasn't me okay and so like what was your mindset going into that week like what is like you know, you, you certainly were aware of the show. You knew how the show worked. You knew that sex was on the table. 
uh, what was, yeah. what were some of the thoughts and concerns that you had going into that week? And what was your reasoning for having the conversation with Con- Clayton that you did? And like knowing what you know now, would you have done anything differently? For sure. I would have done things differently. Uh, that's like 100% knowing what I know now, but I think going into the week, I really wasn't that stressed. I think the show played it up massively. They showed me going down the spiral staircase and like the whole week of fantasy suite week, I actually was kind of sick and I just wasn't feeling well. Um, but like I was emotional and I literally was like, no, I, I really feel like he should be able to explore this however he wants. I don't feel like I need to say anything or, or be like, you can't do this or you can do that. And I was really close with all the girls on my season at the time. So I was like, I don't want to interfere with other relationships. I totally trust that this person is going about this however they need to. But I also know for myself, I'm like, there is no way I can start a healthy relationship in a circumstance in which this person is in love with anybody else besides me. Like if that person's in, if he's in love with somebody else and he's like, I'm trying to get there with you that's me being, that's my cue to be like, I'm actually good. I'm going to dip out like that. I don't want somebody to try to get there with me if they're there with somebody else. And like the physical intimacy side of it as well, definitely just complicates things. I think obviously watching last night, you can see how painful that is. Like if you think about somebody you love or really care about being physically intimate with somebody else, it just kind of feels disregarding it's like disregarding what you have with them um obviously it's a unique situation and obviously it's worked for bachelors and bachelorettes previously where they've been able to find love and 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 have that full experience but i knew for me i was like i can't move forward if you're in love with multiple people if you're intimate with other people i didn't expect it to be like a triple whammy yeah. of all of us <laughs> yeah but i love you the most <laughs> <laughs> you know what i think would be really cool is if like you guys got to talk to him before like all at this like and just kind of tell your reservations on things i think that would be very what you think that the show. The, the show should have the final three have like a little group date setting and they can just like, well, like have an yeah. airing of grievances about like <laughs> like what their position is on sex well no just like you know when you just get there you get to meet them right away and just have like a like a quick five minute chat on how the expect expectations of from this you know what i mean so just to like pick their brains instead of like showing up he's already seen two of the girls before she sees the last you know what i mean no totally because yeah. i think a question that i had a lot during this episode was like was there any conversation about like what you want me to disclose because i think that's a really valid question yeah. like especially like amongst all the women being like right. what do we want to share with one another like right. what do we feel comfortable with here because there's very few situations where you would be having sex with someone who might also be having sex with someone else. Right. And so it's not really like there's a clear playbook for like what's appropriate to share or what's not. Susie, you had some thoughts. Oh, I was just like 100% yes. Like that was even something when I was having my conversation with Clayton, I was like, don't say anything that's going to jeopardize your other relationships. And I felt like watching Zach last night, same thing kind of happened where it's like, whoa, you're totally jeopardizing your relationship with that person. And I'm kind of shocked that they didn't even, well, everybody, I'm kind of shocked how many questions aren't asked or topics aren't covered, whether it's in fantasy suites or before, because it's like, exactly. Zach was trying to like do right by his word and stand strong in his character and be like, I don't want to be a liar or mislead people. But then by doing that, you're kind of sharing intimate information that might have been personal and private to that person that's now literally public. Yeah. So it's really complicated. Right? Yeah, that that was the overlying theme, overwhelming theme, I don't, I don't know, but- Overarching? Overarching theme <laughs> is that like, I thought, you know, I really, I really felt for, I know I've been hard on Zach. I, I really felt for him this episode because mm-hmm. you can true, you, you really can tell he wanted to do the right thing, whatever that was, you know, exactly. like he wanted mm-hmm. to do right by, everyone including himself but at the same time he absolutely like ex- yeah he shared gabby's truth without getting gabby's okay you know and like i i don't fault zach you know it's a very complicated situation but like yeah gabby definitely did not have a say yeah in in that and you could tell she did not go into fantasy suites 
having sex with Zach, expecting Zach to tell the other bachelor. She had that great quote where she said, like, he's feeling better because he cleared his conscience, but like at the price of my heart and me. Yeah. Yeah. I think all of her reservations had everything to do with the show. Like when she, I don't think she cared about Zach telling the other women. I think she knew exactly what that meant. And that meant doing this all on camera. Right. I mean, he was literally telling Gabby, he was talking about the sex they had on camera. (laughs) He's like, hey, so I know we fucked. So like, meanwhile, there's a cameraman. There's like, you know, they're all mic'd up. It's, it's. Yeah. And I felt bad for Ariel. Like, basically you just told her, I just didn't want to sleep with you. (laughs) Yeah. But you (laughs) know, because this whole time she's just. He's like, hey, we're not having sex at all. And he didn't even apologize to her. He wouldn't apologize to Katie. And just like, Ariel's just sitting there. Like, yeah. <laughs> Ariel's going to watch this she, night. Like, she the fuck? Exactly. Well, we'll, we'll, like, to, she we'll, went we'll certainly get to ask Ariel about that next week. Yeah, but. Like, also, she, Ariel's exit. I was like, you go, girl. Like, yeah. it was calm, cool, collected. I was like, everything I love about her just shined in that yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, I think I, I felt really bad for her because, you know, she just, she went in it just kind of feel out the process. And he can't, he had this game plan and, you know, I don't think she expected that. And then everything went different for everyone else except for her. So yeah, she's going to look back on it. And she's not going to be happy. <laughs> Brooklyn. Spring is here and it's good time for a fresh restart to upgrade all things, bedding, towels, you know, you know, up, make it spring fresh, cleaning. make it bright spring. So get all that Brooklinen goodness. You deserve high quality products like Brooklinen because their bed sheets are so comfortable. Their all season duvet, duvet comforter is incredible. Keeps you warm in the winter, cool in the summer. They have amazing styles. Their loungewear is the softest thing you'll ever put on your skin. Check it out now if you're looking for stylish, comfortable loungewear at an affordable price. With over 100,000 five-star reviews, you do not have to take our word for it. There's over 100,000 people who also agree with us. Everything they have is incredibly comfortable. I often refer to it as the eighth wonder of the world. And you can have the high-quality, amazing product that is Brooklinen as well. You can get Brooklinen by shopping online at brooklinen.com for a home refresh at its best. Whatever you need, just upgrade your entire home from your bedroom to your bathroom to the things that you put on your body to your bed. For a limited time, get $20 off plus free shipping on orders of $100 or more with code V-I-A-L-L. That's brooklinen.com, code V-I-A-L-L for $20 off. And if you're in LA, you can see and feel their comfort in real life. You can shop Brooklyn sheets, towels, and more in person at their Santa Monica store. Go check it out. It's incredible. That is B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com with code V-I-A-L-L for $20 off. Dating is tough. Dating is hard. We all know it. We've all tried various methods, friends of friends, dating apps. But what if you could do it better? What if you could be more intentional? What if you could have someone, a matchmaker per se, working for you to help you find love? Wouldn't that make you happy, Nick? It would. And Talkify is doing it for y'all. Talkify is the country's number one modern matchmaking service that is designed to help you achieve relationship success. Listen, uh, as we talk more and more about dating and dating apps and things like that, I I think we have to make uh, some changes in our dating lives. We have to be more intentional. And Talkify is allowing you to do that with great matchmaking services because Talkify is helping you match with real people and and, and setting you up for success by trying to like get some of the heavy lifting out of the way before you meet someone for that drink or cup of coffee. Also, they handle all the communication. So like I know oftentimes like as a woman dating, there's like a safety element. Let them handle like any sort of communication. Let them meet this person, vet them, make sure they're a good fit for you. Let them make the reservation. Let them send you, you know, where you're supposed to go at what time they do all the heavy lifting. Here's how it works. The Talkify matchmakers will meet with you, uh, learn about what you're looking for in a partner. And then they'll uh, select and screen potential match candidates for you. From there, your matchmaker plans your dates, introductions, and handles all the communication for you, creating a safe and stress-free dating experience. Talkify is committed to finding your match. 80% of matched clients met their person within the first 12 matches. So if you're looking to mix up your dating life, if what you've been doing hasn't worked for you, we highly recommend a matchmaking service and we recommend Talkify. And right now, Talkify is offering our listeners 20% off when you become a client at 
talkify.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That is T-A-W-K-I-F-Y dot com slash V-I-A-L-L for 20% off when you become a client. Talkify.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Yeah, I also, like when I was watching it, I thought that for a bit, but then I also was like, I think Zach and Ariel had way more physical chemistry than Gabby and Zach, but I think Gabby and Zach are way more compatible than Ariel and Zach. So when Zach did say the line, it wasn't lust, it was love. I genuinely did feel like that was true. Like I do think Zach sees a future with Gabby. And I think that from watching it, it's like, I think he was really, I don't know, maybe it was like in the moment he was like, okay, I think I'm going to be with Gabby. Like this feels right. But then maybe the next day he's like regretting that. I don't know. I think that if he had made this reservation and then knew that he wasn't picking Ariel and then move forward physically with her, then that could have been kind of shitty, but maybe he genuinely was just like acting on love rather than lust. Maybe. Do you now? I, I don't know if Ariel, like Ariel might be like glad she's like, well, you know, you didn't pick me. So now Get I didn't that have the dirty dick yeah. away from me. But yeah. like but now <laughs> the, the, is Zach mad though? Cause if, you know, Zach was like, I'm not gonna have sex with anyone. And then he has sex with Gabby. And we all can assume, yeah, he hooked up with. Katie. I don't Katie. know. I, I don't think know he if, did. I don't know if they did. Oh, you really? Th- yeah, because I don't know because Come of on, the guys. moment when he was walking Ariel out, and Katie turns to right. Gabby and goes, "I know you slept with him." And I'm like, "Why would you say that to her? They've been pretty good friends this whole because process. Awkward. Why I don't would know. she say that to her and not give any sort of implication that she also did the same thing?" When Gabby says, "It feels like I have a scarlet letter on my chest." All right, well, I, well, I, three, we have three ladies in this room. If you're in Katie's position, you're in love with this guy. You think you're the one. And then you find out during <laughs> fantasy suites that he slept with someone else. And now it's your night. And it was hard to hear. It's, you know, you have all the same emotions that Katie had during the day. And then you kind of, kind of center yourself. You get back to like, all right, well, fuck it. Like it's bachelor. I signed up for this kind of thing. In your fantasy suite, what do you think you would do? Would you want to be like, well, I gotta, I gotta show them what this is all about? Gotta fuck for my life, <laughs> fuck for my life, literally. Like, or would you fuck not? Like, what what would you do? I don't. I'd be like, don't touch me. <laughs> I think I'd be like, absolutely yeah. not. You would. There's the couch. You would say don't. But like, this is. The- I don't think I would take it off the table because, like, okay, so if we're fucking, would you it still be get good. engaged in t- t- two days? Maybe. But you'd make him sleep on the couch. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I don't know why he told. Yeah. Ugh. I don't think I would. <laughs> the I definitely wouldn't be able crazy. to like, be physical with yeah. him. I, I feel like that would be off the table for sure. Like, just for how I work, like, I don't know. If I'm starting a relationship, mm-hmm. if I were just having fun, it would be different. But if I'm trying to start an intimate, emotional relationship with somebody and you just were physically intimate with somebody else, it doesn't make sense in my brain. I I wouldn't be able to do it, but obviously Clayton and I worked out and with us, but it took time to work through that and right. to heal from like some of the pain that comes from that. So I think that she probably can move forward and and she can be okay. But I mean, when the comes to the physical stuff, I'd be like, oh hell no, we're not yeah. doing that. Okay, yeah. I goes I like I always say, don't ask questions you don't want the answers to. But she didn't ask. She didn't he ask, told. and he just <laughs> like true. no, that's like in my head, like I'm not gonna ask the question because I don't want it to know. Yeah, I don't want to really even think about it. He really through that confession too yeah. with Katie. <laughs> He's like, so listen, anyway, so I said I wasn't going to have sex, and then I did. He's like, you're telling on yourself. Stop. T- like, And I yeah. I think it was admirable to be like, okay, he is erring on the side oh, of like looking dude. like an idiot. Yeah. And like, or like just like looking kind of like awkward and like, because it's, it's weird to like talk about this stuff open. I'm telling you, it's all Sean Lowe's fault. It's all Sean Lowe's fault. Unrealistic expectations for yeah. Sean Lowe. They had Sean Lowe, like the only bachelor who's ever like had a success story come in how many fucking times this season At and just three. like and just like pour his like way of life and on onto zach as if like you know well you know you have to be holier than thou or don't have sex or whatever and it's just like trying to follow the sean low narrative and here we are you know here we are i was gonna ask was sean's decision that was like a religious or like a moral he thing was, which uh, would be yeah. very different right <laughs> i mean it was like he was the virgin bachelor then you found out it was born again he wasn't really a virgin yeah. but he stopped having sex and then i've heard that he 
while he might not have had sex with the other women in the fantasy suite, like he also rounded a couple bases. Like it was all. <laughs> I always thought of, I heard I was thinking about that as well. Like, yeah. Is, okay. So technicalities. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he tells the world, you know, uh, and, and Zach. <laughs> so it's all, it's all, it's all Sean's fault. I have a question. This might come off terrible. Has anyone ever had their period during? That's an amazing point. Fantasy mm. sweets. Probably. Like just waiting for this huge Probably. Yeah. And if so, they all did because they've been living together, <laughs> so they're synced up. Yeah. That's a good point. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Shark Week. I I I'm not Shark aware. <laughs> Shark Week. <laughs> oh <my God. sighs> wow. Would that stop you from having sex? It's I'm a- never. I'm like no. But I've had guys be like, I don't care. And I'm like, mm. but I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, but it's not just about you, is it? <laughs> it's not about you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I uh. Yeah, I think it would have been. Um, I, I think it would have been a blessing <laughs> if if some people had had their period. Yeah, for him, that would have made it so much easier. I yeah. feel. <laughs> or all. Let's say it was all of them. Well, because I do think that was like a real in this episode. Because like Ariel said it for a moment. Also, is it Ariel or Ariel? I keep gaslighting yeah, myself. I just Ar- Ariel. I think it's Ariel. 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 Ar- Ariel? Ar- because I we've been saying Ariel, but when she read that card, she said Zach and Ari. It was she did it, it differently Ariel? than we've been yeah. doing. I've been yeah. saying Ariel, but you guys said Ariel, and I was Ooh. like, oh wow. No, it's- I think you've been doing it right. We will clarify with her in studio. But I feel like she had a comment where she was kind of like, oh no, sex. Like we'll see about that. And then Gabby definitely had a comment like that. So it's interesting. Yeah, Gabby had the. What did she say exactly? It was. I think it was like we'll see maybe, about that, yeah, well, or like. Yeah, I mean, you guys been there for like two, three months. What do you mean? I mean, yeah, you guys been ima- kissing. Imagine, and- <laughs> yeah, imagine dry humping. I'd be ready to go. Like, imagine <laughs> it's the Bachelorette, and the Bachelorette sits down and says, "Hey, not having sex with anyone," and the fucking guy in an ATM is like. We'll see about that. Yeah. <laughs> imagine it how that not work fucking the goes. Opposite way. Imagine how that lands. That's where I was going, where bed. I'm like, this is like not a, when we stop and pause, it's like, this is a moment where we're pushing I feel some like, boundaries. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. When it comes yeah. to pressure about sex, there's definitely a double standard. That's for sure. Fantasy Sweet Week was one of the most uncomfortable weeks of my life. Honestly, I feel like you're in your head as well. You know how it is it trying to get the blood flow to the. Yeah. You know, you know, pop a couple blue pills just to be, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, focus, 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 Get focus. a 12 hour erection. Yeah. <laughs> like we can't do the rose ceremony. No, we just I, have I, to do them all back to back. Tie it around the whole leg, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. If someone fucks me with the same erection as a fucks the same girl, no, that's unacceptable. Andrew can't get it with down. He's got to do them back like to back. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's hilarious. He actually like doesn't do any dinner portions. Uh, it's just like meet him in the bedroom. He can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> Office hours. Yeah. No, it's uh I think I I really watching this I really empathized with Zach. I think Zach was as soon as he told anyone that he wasn't going to have sex, I think my guess is knowing from experience that pressure was applied. And I think it's all treated as no big deal because Zach's a guy. Well, I also think like women are kind of socialized to be like, don't give them your precious little flower, whatever. And so then there's kind of, you have this idea that like, I'm the limiting factor. Like it's about when I give this thing away, which is a real blind spot because it's not just about when you feel comfortable doing that. There's like another autonomous person there. But I think because there's like so much of this like socialization around like whether you're allowed to initiate sex or want sex, like I think it's unfamiliar. And because of that, like we see people like don't handle it perfectly. Right. I, I mean, I like the the saying of overnights better than fantasy because I I'd rather just be like we get to spend the night together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that's way more genuine. And you know, whatever happens happens instead of putting this pressure on like, well, we're about to go. <laughs> you, well, know? Weird, you know, Zach did not have to make it about sex. I, I mean, I, we now know Matt James. I think he's been pretty open that he didn't sleep with anyone. It was never talked about. Right. Certainly, you know they. Did the whole like morning wake ups mm-hmm. and people thought whatever they thought about, you know, and they made their assumptions and That's guesses. How you do it. That's how you but do like it. no one knew and it wasn't really a part of of the show because mm-hmm. he didn't give him anything to talk about. He's like, Yeah, you can film us waking up and people can, you know, make their own assumptions, but 
Zach brought up sex and and then made the whole. He literally said sex week. Yeah. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and so. Yeah, he kind of shot himself in the foot with that. Yeah. Yeah. Good for us, bad for him, but yeah, yeah he definitely, unfortunately, put himself in a in a tough spot because from that moment forward, everyone was hoping that Zach would fuck up and succumb to sex. I guess I don't know. Yeah. And I feel like one of the women, I don't remember if this was like Ariel or Katie, or maybe they both said it in different ways, but where they were kind of like, I don't like, this isn't the kind of thing I go in with like a meeting agenda. Be like, I'm going to play, like, we're going to do this. Ariel said that. Yeah. Ariel? No, no, I'm in my head. Yeah. Ariel. You think it's Ariel? Damn, I I don't even remember now. What if it's Ariel? (laughs) Ariel. We're getting dangerously close to the crab in Little Mermaid. Ariel. Right? Ariel. 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 Ariel, we're sorry. Ariel. Yeah, we're okay. so sorry. Fix us. <laughs> we're sorry. I, it was her who kind of a very, very cleverly was just like, I like to more respond to the moment. I think yeah, she, was, she exactly. was kind of yeah. saying, which it was great. I was going to say, I like how she handled it because I felt like instead of just being like, oh, oh yeah, we'll do whatever you want, Zach, she was like, oh, like I ha-, you know, I also have feelings in this and have my own way that I would go about it. It's like both their journeys. It's not just sex. Mm-hmm. Um, not to say that Zach has to sleep with any of them, but you know, she wasn't just like, Oh, I think that's a great idea. You know, she was, she like stated how she felt too, where she's like, I think we should, we shouldn't write anything off. We should see where the night takes us. Yeah. And it's freaking Thailand. Like enjoy, enjoy being there. And if the emotions are running high, then get it done. But if like the grubs make you horny. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> like, like, come on now we have this beautiful place. Like, let's not squander it. Like thinking about something that, you know what I mean? Can or can't won't happen you know what i mean so i think he just like focused on way too much of the whole like okay we got to get to the sex we got to get to this like dude like i didn't leave new mexico dude you're in thailand <laughs> like <laughs> you are living life right now you got beautiful women and you're in thailand like i'm not thinking about anything else but just enjoying my time there so i think that was like it's kind of frustrating me i was like bro you have no good no no idea how good you got it <laughs> i think another reason that maybe the women would be or I'm curious what the rooms take on this is because like we know like the orgasm gap where like the difference <laughs> me on my soapbox. But like it's true, like the rate of orgasm among women who are having sex with men is so much lower. Like it is like men having men are having orgasms at much higher rates, like two women having sex with one another are having much higher rates. It is this very specific like men, women fucking thing. So I think as like. And that's something that's come up so much on Better Date Than Ever is like people not like being mindful or like asking what you're interested in. And I think there's just like, I'm sure there's also some women who are absolute like terrorists when it comes to not being like generous lovers. But I think it's a much more pervasive issue or a much more kind of like dice roll thing. So it would make sense to me if Ariel's like, I want to make sure you're not like a shitty, selfish lover who's like two pumps by like kind of situation. (laughs) Do people agree with that or disagree? Yeah. That yeah, there's like no. more volatility, so maybe like a little bit more of a reason to explore. But you could argue that instead of having sex, you could just spend all night talking about what you like in bed or what yeah. your preferences are or how much, you know, foreplay you like or enjoy, uh, how kinky you are or aren't, and kind of you you don't have to have sex in order mm-hmm. to get on the same page in that department. And I think you could find out a lot by asking some very intimate and personal questions very true. and see how they respond to those intimate and personal questions. And who knows if you ask those questions, you might get That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? You're like, you're exa- exactly. Exactly. Andrew Maybe. keeps circling back. He's like, but if it's right, it's right. It's right. It's right. If, if your dick it's is right. hard, your dick is hard. Exactly. I'm like, I, it's, it's, we're in the it's moment. It's Thailand, it's baby. fucking Thailand. You imagine, you know, Zach's like, we don't want to have sex. Let's talk about sex on that. And every, after every question, Ariel's like, <laughs> But uh, <laughs> yeah, that look that would be that'd be hard to, to pass up, Zach. I don't know what you're doing. I think it's kind of like in the U.S. how you can't how you can't drink until you're 21. So when you're a teenager, that's the only thing you want to do. It sets yeah. as the goal. So you're not when you're gonna have alcohol, you're not thinking I'm gonna have wine with dinner. You're thinking I'm gonna have it to get fucked up. So it's kind of the same thing. Is that sex being the goal? It's more, it literally makes it the goal talking about it. It's not about how you enjoy it or what it means. It's more so just doing like the ultimate, most extreme version of it. And I think that's the problem. It sets it as the goal too much by saying it's not the goal. It makes it the only thing people want to do. Yeah, totally. Am I the only one who thinks Zach also had sex with Katie? I think Zach had sex with Katie. 1,000%. You 1,000%. Well, yeah. they've, the, 
I'm I'm definitely not a thousand percent. I mean, did you see the way he was looking at her when Gabby was at the like right after the ceremony? But maybe that's because they didn't have sex, and he's like, I want to see her with her clothes off, eyeballs. <sighs> maybe he was tailoring to her because they didn't. I don't know. Possibly. I'm I think he. I think it down. scared him shitless of the idea that he could have lost her. Yeah. And I think that's mm-hmm. why she got the first rose, and I think that's why she's getting the attention. Because yeah. he's like, oh my god, I almost lost you. How do I keep you here? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like he yeah. tipped the scales really far, though. And granted, I realize this could have been an editing thing where it's like they did only show us like a few clips of that conversation at the very end mm-hmm. where they're like toasting to one another. But it's like Katie's saying the toast. Zach's looking at Katie when he's saying like, you know, meeting my family. And like, it. W- I did feel so uncomfortable for Gabby. I was like, and she what said her? it. She, she was there. So obviously that was happening like the whole time. So, I mean. Katie's winning, right? Regardless of if they had sex. She's the final rose pick. Yeah, I, know, I, would, I think it's Katie, yeah. Yeah. I would, I'd bet. Which makes me really feel for Gabby. Yeah. yeah. All, you know, the whole episode, you know, Gabby f- telling, you know, how she's always feel like the second best or the, you mm-hmm. know, second choice. And she's been opening up about, you know, being cheated on and accepting less than she knew deep down that she deserved. Oh, my God. Derek pointed out she has this whole thing about being in second. Yes, yeah. I thought that That's was what I'm like and with then, the roses. Foreshadowing? She gets the second rose at the rose ceremony. Yeah, he literally gives her the, the rose second. The second rose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. That's not entirely Zach's call. Uh, yeah. He could have fought for it for sure. But it did feel like damage control vibes. Cuz it felt like with Katie cuz I feel like maybe we should unpack like the moment that he told Katie cuz it's like it's raining. Their feet are in water. Do you guys see that? Like they're up to water in their ankles. A very wet experience. At the ceremony? No, <laughs> no. When, when she. Oh yeah. yeah. On like the they glass were, bottom no, transparency. Zach told Katie he had sex with Gabby in a swamp. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a pouring rain swamp. Like how do I? It's like tell her a place where she can't possibly escape or leave. She has nowhere to go because she's stuck in a swamp. She's the most physically uncomfortable yeah. she will ever be. <laughs> Yeah, she's gonna be. Yeah, like I mean, but like, when do you drop? Well, you don't drop. Not in a swamp. But like for him, like what? What was the best time to do it? Though I, I, don't, not, I do think it was smart probably, to give it like the intermission to cool down. Where it's like, okay, I'm gonna say this upsetting news. You're gonna have time to I process. Tells chill her, out. Tells her in the back. raft. <laughs> just <laughs> she capsizes it. She's in front of him, and he's just behind her. Hey, by the way, hitting him with the paddle. Uh, yeah. Get out. But the he boat. was just that, that whole canoe situation. It was just silent, and then finally she was like. You seeing anything on the bottom? And he's like, <laughs> fish. Like, it was the weirdest dialogue. No, I will say, he's he's got to be one of the nicest guys. But is it me or the conversation's not great? I feel yeah. like they're just not good. The banter's not very... There's a lack of follow-up. He's a, yeah. yeah, he's not... Yeah, like, we've discussed this this season. Yeah, I he mean, but seems, I... He seems like an incredibly well-intentioned man. Yeah, yeah. But just... Not a ton of of experience, yeah. and he very desperately, like you think. I think you said early on. I think you know, as every lead does, they want to be liked, they want to be well received. Mm-hmm. He wants to play the role really well, and it seems like all these producers just like telling him, "Sean, look, listen to Sean, like bringing Sean low and like the pressure of the one bachelor who's 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 actually with the person they picked, you know, the one." the one bachelor and they keep bringing him up and like here is Zach trying to like, I guess I should, yeah. like, I should follow this way, yeah. you know, like, yeah. and, and do it this way. And, and I, I can imagine there's a lot of pressure. I just think he lacks experience. And I think with experience that he's lacking, he, he lacks the ability to empathize and that right. makes him less of a conversational conversationalist. Yeah, like it felt like he was reacting to something that wasn't actually happening. Because like I totally saw, I really did empathize for where he was coming from, where he was like, this is going to look horrible. It's going to look like I set this one expectation and then didn't follow through. And Katie's going to feel like she had sex with me under false pretenses. If that is what happens, like I totally see where he was coming from in terms of being like, I owe everyone full transparency. But it's like you're reacting to something that like nobody else is experiencing. No, yeah. I don't know. I do think I well, he I think Zach is a high character guy though. Very totally. high character. Yeah, he yeah. very much cares about his character yeah. and he wants to do the right thing even if the right thing is messy. Mm-hmm. We could sit and that's it's fun to debate like whether he should have told them or not have told them. I I hate how Gabby was made to feel. And I say that because I don't I don't want to say how 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 Zach made her feel. It was an impossible situation he was in 
I think whoever he is with, they will know that they are with someone who cares about being upfront and honest. And I think that goes a long way, you know, yeah. like I, that goes farther mm -hmm. than some of this other stuff. We, I, I don't know if it was you, Susie or whatever, but you mentioned, or someone said, you know, people have been successful, you know, in bachelor nation, which reminded me just how unsuccessful many couples are because, you know, Vanessa and, Vanessa and I dated, but we broke up. You and Clayton dated, but you broke up. So many more people who got engaged on the show are not together. My question to you, Susie, is because, and I've heard this, that while people get together and they stay together, that the sex that happens during Fantasy Suite Week, that doesn't, that the sex outside of the engagement that happens during Fantasy Suite, Fantasy Suites Week, is a big reason why a lot of these relationships don't work out. It's not the only thing. There's other fights and other arguments, but like one major like fighting point that constantly keeps brought up and maybe it's not just well you fuck them or you had sex, but like what does that what that sex meant or you know the confidence that that you know or lack thereof that brings in the, in the relationship did that play a role with your relationship with Clayton? You know, the the everything that went on that week, whether it's the I love yous or the sex, like, mm -hmm. is that something you tried to get over and just ultimately realized you couldn't? Because I think a lot of people do. They, it's just like, hey, well, it was the show, and I guess I have to deal with this because it's the show, but there's a big difference between trying to accept something and being able to accept something, and, and people try to get over things all the time and realize they can't, and I'm just wondering, is, is that something you dealt with as well? I think to an extent, probably. Um... I'm trying to think back exactly, but it certainly didn't play in, into any of the reason why we broke up. Um, I really do feel like I was able to move past it in our relationship. And I don't think knowing myself, I wouldn't have gotten back into a relationship if I didn't genuinely think that there was a chance that it could work out. Um, and so before we even like committed to being with each other, I think that I had moved past like the physical intimacy side of things, the emotional side of things. I remember struggling for a long time thinking like, and to this day, I still kind of think, I'm like, why did you pick me? Like, we aren't compatible. And I think it's more of a testament to the process of the show. You don't get enough quality time with that person. In my mind, I mean, that privacy behind fantasy suites, like in my mind, I was like, I would have to ask every question under the moon. I would want to really know that person on such a deeper level. I would want to know so much about them as a person because that's the only time you get to like truly be real and raw and like not have to worry about the world judging you. But the show doesn't give you enough time to have those kind of conversations. It's it's like it feels very surfacey, I think, for a lot of it. And I think that is a harder thing to get through when you're starting a relationship with somebody and you're like, we don't you really don't know if you're compatible until you get out of there. Oh, sure. So I remember looking back and being like, you are way more compatible with like, well, Rachel, I remember thinking I was like, why'd you pick me? Like you had somebody that you probably would have been really compatible with and and other girls, too, that didn't make it quite as far. So you think he would have been more compatible with Rachel? I think looking well, I don't know. I don't know about now, but like more compatible than me. Are there, Probably. Are there moments that like having had the experience of dating in the real world and like getting to learn about him in the way that people traditionally learn about partners? Like, has that recontextualized any moments you had on The Bachelor where you're like, in the moment, I thought this was nothing. But now I'm like, oh, no, this was actually evidence of like this underlying incompatibility that we uncovered. Yeah. Like 100%. Do you have an example? <laughs> well, OK, this is one thing that comes to mind, which I don't even know if I'm really supposed to say it, but there were things that were said or done throughout the process where I was like, that was so thoughtful. Like that was such a thoughtful thing to have happen. And then after the process is over, you find out that that was somebody else's idea. Yeah. That was somebody who's been listening to me in ITMs for months that was like, you should make this toast and talk about her character and how you admire her as a human being. And that you, you know, like these things that you're like, I'm like, how does he know me so well? He's speaking <laughs> to my character. And it's like, no, these are people in his ear. Um, and so it takes away from things where I, when we come out of there, I'm like, wait, you don't know anything about my character. You don't know anything about who I am. Um, so it definitely recontextualized a lot of stuff. I've never forgotten that you mentioned there was one time 
where some or like that something you alluded to is that in the relationship like he would get dinner and not ask if you wanted anything. I think about that maybe once a week. Every time I pass a Chipotle, I'm like, how? Do-? And I always text my boyfriend. I'm like, do you want anything at Chipotle? Because it is like so feels really kind of baseline. He <laughs> called me out on that interview from this podcast. He was like, he was like, at first I was really annoyed at you that you brought that up. And then he was like, and I complained about it to some of my friends. And then they were like, you didn't offer to get her Chipotle. And he was like, and then I realized I really messed up. <laughs> Yeah, you did. <laughs> you know, Clayton is not, uh, uh, the Clayton I have, not, and I've never actually met Clayton in person, but I have gotten to talk to him a few times. He seems always be, to be willing to learn from his mistakes, and we he we is. love that. You know, I recently just met him. That's what kept us really, really good dude. Oh, yeah. Really good dude. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. an he's an accountable guy. Yeah, yeah. He is accountable. He sticks to his word. Honest. He genuinely like he he really tried, and he really learned a lot and he really was willing to grow as a partner that's awesome what else what else do we do we have anything else we want to break down here i think it's just like where do we what do we where do we go from here here? (laughs) yeah like an analysis of like where what are we walking into the finale with the ominous uh, champagne cheers when he was like not making eye contact with gabby yeah i i again i I think charity is gonna be great i don't i'm sure she'll be fine i hope charity gives us uh some some Gabby energy because I this episode, you know, when she was on that date during the day and she has, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to like tell you everything. Gabby has that like yeah. lack of filter that is yeah. so like wonderful for TV yeah. where once she kind of gets in her head, she like doesn't have a choice other than just to express herself. Yeah. And you know that it's not, you know, like overly th- what all thought through and exactly. i mean that in a positive yeah. way it's just so just, raw just and authentic and she just like shoots from the hip you know i feel like we've gotten to know gabby as a person more than anyone else throughout this season and it just like i really want i want that if, if zach does pick katie that's just the energy i want from from my lead i hope charity is able to find that within herself to to really just be is authentic and just yeah. talks, you know, through her insecurities in real time, you know, and it's not, you know, it's not easy to do. That's a, it's a skill and a quality that is unique to Gabby. And it's, it's a great characteristic that she has. And it was just really authentic. And I think there's clearly something very charming. I will, I will say to, you know, as, as, as critical as I have been of, of Zach, of his lack of empathy, I think he was pretty solid this episode with empathy you know we always debated whether he should have said something or not but like with gabby and with katie he seemed to be really considerate of like wanting to make sure they were okay and he really he really seemed to be wanting to take care of of them and i I thought he was the most empathetic i've seen him all season so i I just want to give him a little little credit for that i remember with katie him having like a false start where like at first when she was reacting and getting upset like he was kind of like, well, I was trying to like defending himself. And then I remember like the second time, like he was like, I know that this is weird. I know. like, And it was just like, you're like, oh, my God, this man can validate. This man can listen. This man can like connect and like really like empathize in a way we haven't seen him before. Like, do you think it was enough to redeem him in terms of like redeem when you him? think of him as a bachelor? Like, how high is your opinion? I mean, I, I, I don't like rating him as a bachelor. I don't it's not I don't think that's fair. You know, like, I guess what I'm saying, it's it, like we got what we expected, you know, and it's not, I don't even fault him. They casted a 26 year old guy with seems like a lack of overall life and dating experience. That's not necessarily Zach's fault. I don't know why the franchise is obsessed with casting the Claytons and the Zacks of the world. No offense to either of those guys, but like every time you do, you're going to get these like boys turning into men on TV. They don't seem to be interested in casting older men with more dating experience and more history of being vulnerable with some scars and some damage when it comes to like dating. And I don't think that's a fault to to Zach or the Claytons. I think they have stepped in it and they have certainly opened themselves up for criticism and certainly we've criticized, but my overall opinion of Zach is he seems like a high character guy who wants to do the right thing. And as far as him as a person and in life, you know, we need more people probably like Zach, you know, like all the other stuff, you know, maybe Zach's not your guy in terms of whether you would date him or not, but like, you know, whatever. 
you know, I, I, you know, I'm sure he's an all right guy. Totally. Andrew and Susie, like, what's your kind of going into the finale? Like, what is your opinion of Zach? Well, I just, I think he's a really, he said, I think he's a really good guy. Um, I just feel like it's not inauthentic. It's more like he's trying to be this staple that he's seen from former seasons and past seasons. And I, I've never been a lead, but like when I went on the Bachelorette, I just was like, whatever happens, happens. And I feel like I was my most self and I felt like it went really well for me. And then when I got to paradise, I tried to be like, well, this is how it works. You talk about these things, you do this thing. And it was a complete dumpster fire. So I feel like when you try to overthink these moments and, and on the show, you're tired, you're, you know, you have long hours of filming. And if you try to be something you're not, it's going to end up badly and it's not going to come out right. Cause you're trying to like coach yourself through things. Like if you just let it fly and just be yourself, who knows people like you a lot more when you're just being you. So I think that's one of the things I just wish that more leads will just stop worrying about like the backlash or this or that. You are who you are. Don't try to paint a different picture than who you are. Cause if you try to be something you're not, it's going to come out because that's, you're just physically tired you're probably drinking uh, and then your heart's on the line. So it's like, it's, it's tough to kind of change that. Um, I think he's a really good guy, but you know, I think uh, I feel bad for Gabby. I don't know how he's going to handle it. I don't think he does very well with those situations. I got Gabby leaving on her own. Oh, mm. Ooh. oh wow. Yep. Yep. That's my prediction. We did get some core like I, uh, I don't think so only because, and I don't know who wins. I just heard the runner up is still struggling. Yeah. See, the thing is with me, though, if I'm always going to be second, I'm not going to sit there and then watch myself be second. Ain't no way. Yeah, but that, you that, you never, <laughs> but you can't quit, Andrew. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got to hey, follow through. Ah, you know, you're always yeah. going to be second if you keep quitting before you have a chance to be first. That's true. <sighs> but then they could I, have the dramatic run. We could recreate maybe. Andrew and Katie. I, I don't, <laughs> I just, I heard the runner up is still processing the breakup and still struggling so maybe it'll be a, a, a juicy afr we'll see mm. i have a question for y'all going back to the double standard of sex so we have zach starts the week saying upfront expectations i don't want to have sex with anyone and is awkward or we could debate whether he should have done it the way he did but he sits all these women down and said no sex on sex week all right uh, i that's that's what i want it's what i'm most comfortable with you know ariel ariel does you know says her version of you know we'll see gabby certainly kind of gives a we'll see and successfully i guess you could say uh gets zach to change course now gabby feels the way she does and and we're very quick it's very e we're, we're very quick to criticize zach you know he shouldn't have said anything he shouldn't have said this gabby feels a certain way about zach you know, exposing her I think she her feels slut-shamed, kind of. Maybe. Like, from mm. what she was saying with, like, the Scarlet A, like, I think she's just like, bro, like, you're going to make me look like the girl who, you know? Yeah. My question is, again, if the roles were reversed, Zach set an expectation of how he felt the most comfortable. I don't want to have Zach's sex. I don't know what happened behind closed doors between Zach and Gabby. But I do know that Gabby, before going into the fantasy suite, at least told us, or strongly implied that she hopes to change Zach's mind. Zach's feeling a certain way about it and he's processing it. And I'm just, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, what accountability or role does Gabby have to ask herself? Like, I'm upset that Zach, you know, shared this with other people, but did Gabby respect Zach's wishes? I just think we don't know. Like yeah. I've been in situations where guys are like, I don't want to have sex. And I've been so like, absolutely no worries, whatever. And then it like flipped on its head and they were like, that was so hot. How you respected my boundary. Let's do it. No, like, totally. it's like, I, I don't, Whoa. I don't, I'm, I don't know what happened. I'm just asking. I'm this. What we do know, Zach didn't want to. Gabby did. Then they go behind closed doors off camera. We don't know what was said. We don't know what happened. But we do know going in what the expectations of bo what both of them was. Depending on what happened, does that change how you feel? I think it would have. And again, maybe it happened and they edited it, they edited it out. Um, but I feel like production screwed Gabby because there wasn't a moment where Zach was saying, here's when it shifted for me. Here's what happened. Here's when I changed my mind. So then people are jumping into mm -hmm. these narratives of 
what did she do? How did she push it past like the line? How did she get it there? And it's like, I think, yeah, if if he did have a change of heart, I think it would have been helpful for Gabby's case to for him to say that and say, I this is where it shifted for me. This was a me thing. Maybe they'll talk about it at AFR. I don't know. But like he did say, though, like I I thought he was very protective of him and Gabby's decision in the sense that he was like, obviously, with Katie, he wasn't going to go into like a ton of detail about how glad he is that they did it. But I do think when he was talking about it, at least in interviews, he was like, it was the right thing for us to do. Like he used a lot of like us language that made it feel like it was a very like mutual decision. Sure. I mean, you're laying down and you're kissing all day and then you're talking about super intimate things and you've had this attraction for her for however long. Like, of course, like it, he changes his mind. You know what I mean? I feel like the only reason why he didn't want to have sex was because because of the whole past bachelor thing, he didn't want to mess that up for other. Like he wants to have sex. Like don't get me wrong. Like he's like, oh, I would love to have sex right now, but I don't want it to look like this on television. Mm-hmm. And I feel Maybe. like I, I just I've been in the yeah. I I just oh. <laughs> from personal experience, I just know like um I put I've been put in some awkward situations, and I've I've felt pressured. I've felt like my wishes weren't respected at times where there was like the i've i've gotten the come on you know yeah here you're saying yeah yeah i think that's bad i think we need to talk about it more and be like that's bullshit <laughs> Just, yeah I, I don't think that happened though yeah. i think i think that was very it was very mutual and i think they were both respected it but like like i said it's a moment thing sometimes when sex happens, it just happens because you guys are in the moment and it wasn't planned. And that's what makes it way more special. Like you had a special moment and we're like, this feels right. And he was like, I am going to go against this and I'm going to do it. So Susie, like, what do you, you, you have thoughts? Yeah, I think I, I see what Andrew, where Andrew's coming from. And if it is truly just to protect his image, then I'm like, that's kind of shady. Like, I don't know. I think that Fantasy Suite Week should be about whatever it needs to be about for the people involved. And if that means sex, then that means sex. But I do think like him coming onto Rachel's season, I remember him saying something like along the lines of what Clayton did is like the worst thing you can do. And he didn't say what that was about, but I remember, I remember hearing that. And I remember it it seeming like he was thinking about it from the lens of the people on the other side. So not the leads perspective, but the women's perspective. So hearing that he declared this going into fantasy suite week, I did think it stemmed from that, but also he had the chance to get to know somebody who was on the receiving end of that pain. So I think that to an extent it could have been like the intention could have been to consider his future partner and be like, this is the best way to try to start a relationship is by protecting that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think also if you're like, oh, it just happens in the moment, but it's like, okay, but there's so many times that we're tempted when we're in relationships. And it's like, if you just act on your feelings rather than like your character or, you know, your your word with somebody else, then that's just disregarding your partner. So I think, I don't think that Zach was doing it simply for the image. I think that he was considering the women, but I also think it's literally so fine that, if, that he was intimate with Gabby, but I just think that he could have been maybe more, protective of her and not sharing it publicly and to me him coming back to her suite to have that conversation that does feel producer driven in my opinion because he would have had that conversation with her in private the night the next morning or whatever before production came if he really felt that way but it sounds like he went and talked with somebody bounced ideas off of them and then went yeah, back you to need her to, was like, like if you're gonna well now you need to tell them or yeah yeah, it's an amazing point. Like, Make where did public. they leave it once mm-hmm. they were at the fantasy suite off camera? Like, what? Because is that part of the reason mm-hmm. that Gabby seems so uncomfortable and upset? Is like, I'm sure it was in some way addressed between the two of them off camera. Well, it's it's just a very complicated week, right? Because you got to imagine, mm-hmm. like, if you make it that far, depending on what your position is on sex in general, right? Like, you know that this week there is a chance to have sex. And if you're, and if you think that you have a shot of getting engaged, if you think you might be the person, their pick, their front runner, so to speak, like this is the final step, you know. And so there's a lot of pressure you put on yourself of like, and then and if you hear, like all these women, when Zach was like, "Hey, I'm not having sex with anyone," they, I, I promise you, like part of them took it as rejection. It is, oh, he's not going to pick me. Because there's no way he's not going to have sex with someone 
before you know he ends up with you know he gets engaged right yeah but then why didn't he tell ariel then he did tell ariel that he they had sex well he was already gonna he he didn't have sex with her so why and he probably knew he was like that wasn't that wasn't fair if you go and tell katie and Mm. like why didn't you tell ariel because then it's like you're only telling them because you want her to still be an option not because it's the right thing to do to have transparency or else there would have been a team meeting yeah there was not Mm -mm. get in the conference room i I mean he you're right i mean he he outed himself at that point we all knew that ariel was going home i mean you get to go to the rose ceremony and this was kind of fucked too (laughs) because zach zach's like i made some i mistakes if you're Gabby, she, yeah. she, you're like basically yeah. telling that she's a mistake. Like, how else could she receive that? Whether I don't know what Zach mm-hmm. meant by that. He maybe would just, he just wanted to like say, "Hey, I've made mistakes," and just be an accountable guy. But like, ooh, choose your words more carefully. <laughs> yeah. And at that point, Ariel yeah. knows she's going home. You could see the look at her face. Like, I don't know what he means by mistake, but he didn't make a mistake with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like she, it was like it felt like she was just dragged along. And, you yeah. know what I mean? And it was like, mm-hmm. yeah. But I mean, she also didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you really think we'll ask her next week? But like, do you really think that she wishes wishes Zach would have came to her hotel room just to tell her? But I just feel like, right. Well, like watching it back now, it's like, well, you went and told Katie, and you just like let her left her in the dark. <laughs> yeah, but that date was already right. over. And so he was about yeah. to have a date with Katie. Yeah, but and she was the first person he told that he she, wasn't having sex. So the only person I really feel like uh, deserves an apology. Is but why does she deserve an apology? Because he completely like shut it down on her and then went and did. So, but, but he started the week thinking, I'm not going to have sex. And right. then Ar- 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 <laughs> Ariel is his first date, right? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. hey, I, I don't want to have sex this week. And I think it's for the sake of the relationship. I, you know, and I, I honestly would agree with Zach. I, I don't think you need to have sex. I knew who I was going to pick that week. And I, if I didn't know who I was going to pick, I wasn't going to sleep with anyone because right. I did not want to have a conversation with the person I just got engaged to and said, we just got engaged. By the way, I had sex with someone else. Like, it's not right. how I wanted to start a relationship. Yeah, you know? yeah, but and he could have had that conversation like at overnight. Like, no, but hey, I'm I saying, so he has, that with, yeah. he has that with Ariel and they don't have sex. He has the date with Gabby. They have sex. Everything changes. Right. At that point, I'm guessing Zach knows. Well, I don't know what's going to happen with Katie, but like Ariel's going home. So <laughs> why does he need to go back to Ariel's room just know. to like let rub it in her? Fi- how that that he would have got like that. I get what you're saying, but that's a lot. That's Clayton energy. That's yeah. like going back and like trying to like dig yourself an even deeper hole because even like i really think clayton was trying to do the right thing in his season but every time he tried to do the right thing he just like dropped another grenade in like everyone's hand just by like he was too he just cut it off at the so like i just think going back to ariel's room would have just been him like rubbing salt on an unnecessary room she didn't know he had sex with gabby at that point she he she doesn't need to know you know, like, well, she's going to find out. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I think. And that's like, I'm like, it's going to come to light. They're all going to find out. Her but like, watching with her girlfriends. Like, wait, what? But yeah. In the, in the moment where Zach was having a date with Ariel, he was true to his word. He, mm-hmm. yeah, he was upfront about his expectations yeah. and they followed through and he ended up not having sex with someone he didn't want to have sex with. I don't think he owes her an apology for not having sex with her. But no, but like the way he went about and telling Katie though, like then why tell Katie? Because he's now about to go on a date with Katie and instead, and he had, he was planning on sitting down with Katie and saying, I'm not going to have sex this week. I didn't have sex with the other two. And so just, you know, I'm not going to have sex with you. But instead he did have sex with Gabby. He couldn't have the same conversation with Katie that he had with Ariel and Gabby. So instead of having that conversation, he wanted to be honest with, with mm-hmm. Katie. And so he gave Gabby the heads up that he was going to tell Katie. Why did Ariel need to know this? I just feel like she was in it like the same way, you know, going through the same process. I mean, and, you know, she came in the same expectations that all the other women is. Oh, we know what happens this week or it could happen. But to feel like it just shut down, I would feel like. That's like a that'd be just a shot to my like pride a little bit pride and ego. I'm sure it is, but yeah. I don't think he owes her an apology for her ego. Imagine if I mean, Zach walks in and says, "Hey, by the way, um, turns out I am gonna have sex this week." Yeah, yeah, that's 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 kind of how and it you're happened. going home. Like, what's well, just why did like, he just be like, "Hey, I don't think it's you," or like, and then why don't he just break up with her then, like on the second 
That's a good point. That was like, not he his has, choice. I but mean, he has been on this season. He's been very big on like the second I don't right. feel chemistry, I break yeah. up with them. And I do uh, think that that would have been a valid approach. Right. Why bring it like, to the rose ceremony then? Like uh, <laughs> he could have done that, yeah. but like you that know? probably wasn't in that probably wasn't an option for him. Right. It okay. will be interesting to yeah. see what she has to say at AFR. Yeah. yeah, the pride and ego. I'm like, the, but none of that should really come into play when it comes to like finding your person. I feel like yeah, you might be hurt that somebody didn't want to sleep with you, but like that if he's trying to make decisions on character and if he really felt like he could see a future with um, Gabby, but he was like, I just don't see a future with Ariel, Ariel. Then I don't know. I don't think he owes her anything. If at that point he had made his decision, he was like, okay, it's definitely not Ariel, but these other two women I want to move forward with. I'm so confused. I need to, you know, be upfront, honest with them. It's like, that's about open communication in a relationship. The relationship with Ariel's ending, like, and I think, yeah, maybe that it just wasn't in the cards for him to go talk with her beforehand. But I just, yeah, I think it would be weird to be like, hey, I'm breaking up with you and I slept with somebody else. Well, or, so he, or he could have just broke up with her if he knew it wasn't her. Yeah. Like, why bring her to the rose? Yeah, but. Because The Bachelor. <laughs> I mean, so well, you don't have a choice. Matt yeah, James did that. Choice. Every season's different. And I, I'm just telling you, yeah. I'm almost certain it wasn't an option for <laughs> okay, him. Okay, gotcha. Wait, but. We haven't even talked about the fact that when he's telling Gabby that he's going to be sharing that with Katie, he hits her with the I'm falling for you. And Gabby hits him with the thank you for sharing that. Thank you. I did saw that. That I was that. iconic. So yeah, I feel I like that, that was Bachelor history. Like the first time a lead has ever said that and a contestant has been like, thank you for sharing. No, Gabby is awesome. I, I love, love that. No, love, she, she's great. Yeah. I love Gabby. Yeah. I think she has every she right to be upset. Energy. And she I, does. She does. Real main character energy. Yeah. 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 She's like the lead in a rom-com that's like quirky and it's like, why isn't it working out for me? And it's like, yeah. you want to root for her. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. I think she has every reason to be upset, but I I am very interested and I don't know if we'll ever know of how, yeah, what changed, how they went from no sex to having sex. And I think it's a very complicated and nuanced conversation and i think it's one that kind of goes outside the conversation of the bachelor to you know gender roles especially in heterosexual relationships when especially when it comes to upfront expectations of hey i don't want to have sex tonight like especially in the past couple years there's been a lot of conversations about uh consent and what that means and coercion and things like that and we we all understand you know, when a woman says, hey, sex is off the table tonight, that that's where the conversation needs to end. There shouldn't be any come on, like, come on, come on, come on you know, right. like that, that, that should not happen. It also should be both ways. And I'm just really curious. And I, I, and I don't think from a society we operate that way. We might say it, but it does not go that way. Like, uh, I think when it comes to pressure and sex, like, I think it is very much accepted when it's the other way around. I don't think we have an issue uh, with pressuring men into having sex as a society. And then also on top of that throw that people kind of, I know it's not a game show, but you win or lose. There's almost the expectation, the pressures of the show on top of the systematic pressures. It just is like a volcano. Yeah, totally. And I think, yeah, I think, I think fantasy sweet week and sex when sex is on the table, through through personal experiences on this show is very complicated and fucked up in a lot of ways that's never discussed yeah yeah okay so then should we notion to move to uh two people fantasy suites not three Interesting. Ooh. oh we didn't even point out that was this the first season in a long time that they no longer had the final three living in the same house were you li- ladies living in the same house at the time because they started doing that on peter's season and they've been doing it ever since and like again a call back to a traditional bachelor they very much didn't do that the women are living in their own suites they're not engaging with each other they're not swapping stories yeah um yeah. they usually do and that, I, like I, come together i too. miss that i i I want them. I like that they did that. I think it's fucked up, but yeah. it's also great TV. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I hear you. That's why we watch. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't do that anymore. Yeah. No. Yeah. They, well, I don't know if it's, well, I don't know if I can even say this, but they definitely brought us together to have conversations from on Clayton season. But I don't know if they actually let people even truly live together because then you can say so much off camera so everyone's very separated still i feel even if you're like living but you together. had oh so you guys but you you had access to one another 
during the mm, fantasy suite with week. other or on, yeah, on camera yeah 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 you had on, on camera, camera access, access mm-hmm. to each other and they don't do that yeah. now yeah right they don't swap stories basically on camera they don't swap stories but they're swapping spit mm. <laughs> yeah or they just didn't show it which could be too it seemed no it seemed like they were definitely going back to old school bachelor I mean, that's been clear this entire season of trying to go back to their kind of roots, so to speak. I wonder if Katie having had that overnight at the museum one on one, was that all relevant? I'm sure not because it just feels like so much has happened since then. But they did have that moment where she had to like walk of shame it. Mm. And so I wonder if there's like a little bit of do we think they did anything on museum night? I don't. I don't even think they spent the night together. Mm. Yeah, I don't think so either. But what? if they did, that 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 changes a lot. If they here. did, they definitely touched some privates. Privates were touched if uh. they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I don't think they did. All right. Well, uh, do we all think Katie wins? Yeah. Yeah. I've been saying that. I used all to season. think it was Gabby, yeah. but after the shopping date, we were thrown by the shopping date. Yeah. And I also just have a hard time believe. I you know, and this is maybe me projecting, but I just have a hard time believing that any lead at this point in the season really doesn't know who they're going to pick. We saw that clip of him saying, I'm torn. <laughs> do we believe that? Yeah. Well, I kind of do. I do. I, I believe he's yeah. very confused. Yeah. yeah. He does seem like he really cares for these two. Yeah, for sure. In and in a different way than everyone else. Mm-hmm. But I just, you know, I, if as, assuming he picks Katie, watching him comfort Gabby and using the language that he uses is going to feel really fucked up to Gabby if he leaves her at the altar, so to speak, because he really, mm-hmm. you know, when she's talking about feeling second, like second choice and second best, he said all the right things and he reassured her and validated her and connected with her. And that is going to fuck up her ability to trust. I mean, that's, that I really feel if, if he doesn't pick Gabby, Gabby is going to be one of the few runner ups and there's not many that this this experience really fucks them up in their ability to trust and and they're going to have some emotional PTSD and it's going to be hard for them to fall in love in the future because they fell fell in love on the bachelor. Did it fuck you up a little bit for like sure. first time? Yeah, both times. <laughs> more, more the first time, but yeah. I I was more aware of how the environment can play a role in my emotions in the second time. So while I mm. felt real feelings, I was, I was more just, I was more self-aware of, of, of my feelings. And I, I didn't fully like give myself to those feelings, so to speak. It was like, I feel this, but who knows how I'm going to feel outside. And in the first season, I, I didn't have that type, type of m- mindset. Well, uh, final thoughts. I think, uh, I think we do have to give Zach credit for being a man of character. I think that's important. Like we can be tough on him. And this was actually so great. I was texting Andrew last night. I was like, this is juicy. It was like, it was really getting good. Um, So like, thank you for great entertainment and television. We hope you're doing well. And we 100% respect and see that you are a man of character. (laughs) So I feel like we should say that. And I hope whoever ends up with them, I hope they're happy. I hope whoever doesn't end up with them, I hope they're on paradise or they're enjoying their life and they're all good. But um, it was entertaining. So I'm excited to see how this ends. I think Susie speaks for all of us. That was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. But (laughs) feel free, Andrew, to Um, add in. No, I agree. Uh, Like being the lead, like that's there's no way to win in in any, no, you know what I mean? I sucks. feel like, mm-hmm. I feel like it's, it, it sucks cause you're putting everyone's, you know, but also your interests on the line. So I know it's really hard to communicate and I think he's doing the best he can. I think all you have to do is give him grace. I want everyone to give him grace of that. Uh, like, like Susie said, he's a good, um, good man of character. We, we all see that. I'm excited to see the future for all. The, I thought this was a great casting. This whole show was really good, especially the bottom five that they've been really good. Um, so, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to seeing most of them on TV more. So Zach's an inexperienced man of character. Okay. But to do, okay. Sorry to do the thing. Is there anybody who, if you saw them and they were single, you guys were out and about, you would maybe shoot your shot with. I'm not going to name names, but I think there's a lot of, have you spoken with any of the women from Zach's season? Uh, yeah, but not like, uh, not like like we're talking. No. Um, (laughs) 
Who are you not talking with? <laughs> He's like all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, do we have to do this? That's just you know, the next next Susie, Jess. back to you in Jess? Virginia. <laughs> yeah, Jess. Jess. Jess, definitely no, Jess. No, no, uh, no. Ariel. I'm no, not he talking doesn't know how to say her name, so Ariel. <laughs> I thought it was Ariel, right? Ariel. I don't know. Right. You, I don't know. You and Vanessa were engaged, and she didn't know how to pronounce your last name. So I, I hope, I hope Ariel's not offended. It's like an Anna Anna situation. Yeah, no, yeah. she'll clear it up. We'll like Re Rihanna is how you say her name, not Rihanna. Yeah, and really? everyone gets that mm -hmm. wrong. Yeah. Rihanna. It's Rihanna. It's yes. Rihanna. <laughs> the fuck? Rihanna. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Did mm -hmm. not know that. Uh, Andrew, you uh, will be uh, hosting uh, Bachelor Live. Yeah. Uh, you want to tell the audience a little bit about that and yeah. give a little plug so yeah, they can Yeah, we're doing a Bachelor Live on stage right now. Um, doing it in Arizona, so it's in one location. So if you have like a Bachelorette theme party that you want to come and drop by and kind of just see, you know, Bachelor up close and front and personal and you know we'll have Rodney be a bachelor so you get to vie for his heart a little bit uh it's a really fun thing you know we go through all the segments of like a regular show you go on group dates you have a date we'll do like a lip sync battle it's really fun uh we'll get to hometowns we'll also get to fantasy suites there's like a little bit of a any any fucking going on bachelor live <laughs> no <laughs> no but we are in scottsdale so I, you never Ooh, know. I'm just after the show yeah. <laughs> no i'm kidding not um, on stage none not of on, that it's not, not like stage. it's not like real it's it's just real good fun um, uh where can people get tickets if they want to show up uh bachelor live on stage.com bachelor live on stage.com and huh? anyone can be a, a contestant by the way so like i've had a couple moms pregnant ladies win like last year on the tour so like you do not have to be single no you don't have to be single no. come have fun everyone no. it doesn't matter there's no you age do not range. have to be there for the right reasons you just have to be there for fun exactly one thousand percent yeah all okay. right Susie. uh anything you want to plug yeah just the blog Susie was like dot com it's like every week i got something coming on videos writing you know, fun stuff. And I've, I'm going to be doing a lot more YouTube. So check me out, guys. Aren't you booking weddings through 2024? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're if you're engaged I'm or if you manager. know someone engaged. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, hire me to film your wedding. Love that. It'll be fun. Oh, I'll come crash. Where can they find you, with you, Susie? All right. If they want to book you to film um, a wedding. You can find me on SusieWasLike.com. There's like an inquiry form. If you go to media. I've got a little portfolio, or you can email me at SusieEvansMedia.com or Great. at gmail.com. It's, it's Susie is like. Susie mm -hmm. was like. Susie, Susie was, was like. like. So S-U-S-I-E-W-A-S-L-I-K-E.com. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Great. And next week for the finale, we have a very funny comedian. You've probably seen her TikToks, Ashley Gavin. She'll really be, epic stand up, uh, amazing jokes, and she's going to be bringing the heat. And she'll the humor. be recapping the finale with us, which is going to get dropping next Thursday on the normal going deeper slot. And then Ariel, Ariel, we'll find out and then give her a big apology either way. <laughs> uh, find out uh, about her experience, her thoughts on Fantasy Suite Week. Uh, does she have regrets? You know, obviously, there's the season's not over yet. I'm sure a lot will happen at AFR. At least we hope a lot happens. And uh, uh, Ariel will be coming straight from AFR to our studio to talk with us. And we're excited about that. And that will be dropping ASAP on Tuesday morning. You know, we're going to be recording really late on Monday. So as soon as it's ready, it will get up. Uh, and that will be going deeper. That will be on Tuesday. Again, recap on Thursday. Uh, anything I'm missing? No, just better date than never. Yeah, do, and vibe. Do better date than never. Uh, Nine PM on uh, on Thursday live. Uh, go check out Vile Files Plus for all the amazing bonus content that you are sure to be missing out on if you haven't signed up. And if you're just a little bit curious, it's a seven day free trial. Just go ahead and click that Apple Pay. You don't even have to pull out your credit card. It's it could not be easier to sign up. <laughs> and again, lit everyone loves it. Literally. Ever, like a, our, we have the freshest tomatoes. All I'm saying, tomato fresh. We're tomato fresh, <laughs> verified fresh tomato. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. See you with Rachel Bilson. Bye. Bye.